The neoclassical emerged in 1760 in opposition to the perceived frivolousness of the Rococo. Neoclassicists looked back to the classical art of the 17th century for inspiration. They took to the idea that strong drawing was rational and therefore morally superior. They believed art should be intellectual and not sensual. Artists like Jacques-Louis David preferred clear drawings and shading with seamless, almost unnoticeable brushstrokes. Neoclassicism in France peaked during the Revolution in 1789. Artists supported the rebels through art, providing inspiration while eloquently displaying self-sacrifice to the state, which we will see when exploring David's Oath of the Horatii, and fostering further contempt toward the French monarchy, as we will see in the death of Moreau. Neoclassicism was at the forefront of the political and cultural ideologies of 18th century France, and served as one of the main forces pushing France toward revolution. Let's dive deeper into one specific French artist in neoclassicism. Jacques-Louis David was born August 30, 1748, and grew to be one of the most celebrated French artists of his day, and a major component of the late 18th century neoclassical movement. David was a flexible artist, serving numerous positions during the Revolution. He first became known for his ability to paint huge canvases and classical themes. Later, when the French Revolution began in 1789, he served briefly as its artistic director and painted its leaders and martyrs, as seen in The Death of Moreau. Although primarily a painter of historical events, David was also a great portraitist, as seen in the portrait of Madame Recolmier. Although paintings such as The Oath of the Horatii and Death of Socrates would come to be associated with the Revolution, David's earliest successes were iconic images of valor and noble deeds commissioned by royal and aristocratic patrons who adopted the neoclassical style as the latest trend. A political chameleon, David adapted this neoclassical style to remain successful through the turbulent climate of his time. He secured important commissions from the monarchy, the revolutionary government, and Napoleon Bonaparte, all of whom used David's classicism to claim their authority. Let's start by breaking down David's Oath of the Horatii and examining both its composition and how it was perceived during its time. The story of Oath of the Horatii came from a Roman legend first recounted by the Roman historian Livy involving a conflict between the Romans and a rival group from nearby Alba. Rather than continue a full-scale war, they elected representative combatants to settle their disputes. The Romans selected the Horatii, and the Albans chose another trio of brothers, the Curatii. In this painting, we see the Horatii taking an oath to defend Rome. Unfortunately, the two families were united through marriage, and it didn't matter who won, there would still be a loss in the family. This painting was rigorously organized, set in what might be a Roman atrium, dominated by three arches. These arches help to represent and highlight the three main subjects depicted. In the first, we have the brothers, who are bound together with their muscled arms raised in a rigid salute toward their father, framed by the central arch. He holds three swords aloft in his left hand, and raises his right hand, signifying a promise and recognizing a sacrifice. And in the third arch, there are the wives of the brothers, who are mourning that sacrifice. At the time, the painting gained traction for how it was interpreted by the French people. The Oath of the Horatii was read as a painting designed to rally Republicans, those who believed in the ideals of a republic and not a monarchy for France, by telling them that their cause will require both the dedication and sacrifice of the Horatii. Moving forward, let's take a look at David's emotional death of Moreau. Jacques-Louis David's The Death of Moreau was painted in 1793 during the French Revolution. In this painting, we see David commemorate a hero of the Revolution, depicting a contemporary event as opposed to his classical antiquity focus. This canvas was made to serve as a political martyr to heroize the Revolution and spread its ideals. This image depicts the aftermath of the murder of Moreau, the leader of the Revolution, by royalist Charlotte Corday in his bathtub. In the bottom left corner, we see the knife that was used to stab him, along with the letter Corday used to gain entrance, being held by Moreau. David made the position of Moreau reminiscent of Christ being mourned and held after being taken off the cross. When the people saw the completed peace, it made their blood boil and further fueled rage against the monarchy. The use of minimalist background draws the eye directly to Moreau in the tub. There is a sense of stiff stillness from how Moreau lays. It feels as though he has been there a long time. Lastly, thanks in large part to the use of warm hues and autumnal shades, the painting with such grim imagery and bleak subject matter emits an almost comforting, soft warmth from it. 
In summary, Jacques-Louis David, born in 1748, grew to become one of the most celebrated French artists of his day and a pioneer of the late 18th century neoclassical movement. From the death of Moreau to Oath of the Horatii, David was a revolutionary artist, shaping the ideologies of the people living in the 18th century.